Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is a different type of video as you can see by the title. I am going to be doing a story time about the time that I got kicked out and the events that led up to it and what happened, blah blah blah, living by myself. So you guys are going to hear all about it in this video. Uh, I am really nervous to post this but hopefully I can maybe be an eye opener to someone but yeah let's get on into the story time. There's just so much to say. Last year in 2018 it started off with me being left home alone. That was because my dad would go on business trips to Australia or once he went to Europe, once he went to China I think. My mum she would have work as well and she would do overnight shifts and she was working a lot last year. She would sometimes want to go away on holiday so she would go on the camper van take off. I wasn't really interested in that and my parents trusted me so they left me at home for the weekend, normally a Friday to Sunday, maybe even a Monday. And they left me at home which I guess was one mistake because they should know I'm not exactly the child of God. Like I'm not like I am a child of God but like I'm not that good innocent child that will just stay at home study read books watch TV you know. I'm more of the type that will that wants to do things like come on I'm only going to be a teenager once. I've got to like live my life you know. <laughs> so when they would leave I would stay home and I would invite my friends over. So there were about 10 of us. They would come to my house and we would drink, just hang out, and then they would go home the next day. I would have company. I had so much fun. I don't regret, like, I regret the way that we did it, but I don't regret my memories. Like, I had the funnest memories. So people coming over maybe started in October, August, or oh no maybe September, October, around that period of time. October, November, December was when it became more common and they would come to my house more regularly. Now there was quite a lot of problems with this that my parents found out. First of all, I would take the car, my mum's car, to pick my friends up which I didn't have permission to use. I'm not allowed to use it anyways because I'm on my learners, but I would take that and pick my friends up, which thinking like now, it could have been very dangerous because it could have led to a serious car crash. I could have been pulled over and you know all that. Or actually story time, I did have to go through a checkpoint once. I had to do like a breath test, but I got part, I went through and they didn't ask for a license or anything. So lucky for that but I wasn't really thinking about the consequences that could have happened I was just living in the moment you know what teenagers do so that was one problem second problem I was actually in my parents house drinking alcohol now my parents don't mind me drinking alcohol my, my dad doesn't mind me drinking alcohol but he wants me to drink it around them honestly I'm the type that would drink to get drunk but like yeah that was a problem. When my friends came over, my parents didn't really find out till November, December that people were coming over. It's because we left evidence. So in the morning, we'd wake up at 8 o'clock, clean the whole entire house. It'd be dishes done, vacuum lounge, cans picked up, gone in the bin. We would find random strangers' bins and chuck our alcohol cans in it. Yeah, we did do a lot to try to hide it. However, there was always one place where you put alcohol can and you don't remember where you put it and my mum found it. She was like, what's this? I'd make up so many excuses and then parents aren't dumb, they know what you're doing. They knew that I had people over at the house without them knowing. The one that really became the final point of what I was doing was December. Oh no, it was January. December, I think it was January. An event happened, so I had the wonderful idea of all my friends coming over so we can all catch up at my house since I knew my parents weren't going to be home. I wasn't currently living at the house I am now. I was at my sister's house. But I knew that my parents were away for this one weekend. I had work, came home, and I went into the house and I said, okay, come to my house. It's all clear. We can come and we can all hang out here. Ah. Uh. It did not go well because when we came back to where I live, the town that I live in, we went to the bank in town to get 
money out because we were going to buy alcohol because we were going to go to a party. That's when my sister and her husband caught all of us in the car. Yeah, that was really embarrassing. But she called us so we had to drive all the way home and that's pretty much where it ah, went downhill from. Pretty much she went into the house, she said, what are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Like totally understandable. I would do that if, as well, but like, I wouldn't. I don't blame her. I mean, yeah, she can tell my parents what I did, but from my side of the story, the fact that she says she wouldn't tell my parents that we were in the house, we took the car, and then she did tell my parents, yeah, that was kind of ratchet, you know, but that's her choice, and I'm totally not angry at her for that, but um, I would never do that if I had a younger sibling. I would tell them, like, bah! but I would never tell my parents just because I don't want a dog. They rung my parents, my mum texted me, get off the property, police are going to ring you. So I was really stressed. This was when I started smoking a little bit. It only picked up at parties, but then I was, after, once my sister caught me, I was like, oh, I had so many emotions going through my head, so that's when I really started smoking. When we're talking about smoking, cigarettes, which, yes, disgusting. <laughs> so... She caught us, pretty much we had to leave. We said we were going to a party because we were supposed to go to a party but we couldn't get a ride out to the party. So we were stranded at this park for literally five hours with all our bags and I felt so bad. However, the boys had left their PlayStation in the house and my plan was to go back but we went back and the whole house was locked. That didn't work. We were there for maybe an hour and then my sister came down the driveway. Oh, so when we came, okay, I forgot this part. When we came back to the house, I went by the front door and I could see two large bags and they were full of my clothes. If you see two big bags outside your house filled with your stuff, you're bound to think you're kicked out. That's when I thought I got kicked out. My parents say that they didn't kick me out, but honestly, to me, that's kicking someone out if you chuck your stuff outside. Anyways, had to say that. But when my sister came, I told her, can you please unlock it? We just need to get the PlayStation and we'll leave. We got the boys' PlayStation. We were on my driveway for like an hour. We weren't allowed on my property. We had to shut the game. I left all my belongings by the neighbor's house. They were really, really, really nice. So the boys got picked up by one of their sisters and me and the girls got picked up by my older sister on my birth family which I appreciate that so much. When she picked us up that's pretty much the beginning of four months, three, three to four months on my own. Not on my own but like on my own if that makes sense. I was house jumping for quite a while. I was just going wherever I could possibly go. I spent most of my time at my friend's house at the start which I appreciate it so much. It meant so much to me that I was able to stay at their house and I officially started staying there, I think it was February, started to flat at the house. Now, I had no money whatsoever and I had to do everything by myself. Income, I had to pay for food, for rent, you know, all those basic things. Which meant that I had to go on the benefit. Which was something that I never thought I would go on, but I did go on it. I went on it for three months, or no, two to three months, I think. And, ugh, the benefit is not a nice thing to be involved with. I mean, it's good for people that are struggling, but trying to get the payment took maybe three weeks. They just kept wanting more and more and more and more, and I would do it all the time, and then I would say, oh, you need this next time, you need this next time. It was such a, it, I hated it. In the end, it worked a place I was staying at they got their flat money and then I just got my normal money that I normally get which is I get $128 a week yeah so pretty much I was living by myself for three months you would think it's so cool but it is honestly very hard it did have advantages I mean you are your own you're your own self I could go out every night I could go parties whatever but I do think that you do need a grounding. You might not think it if you've never been by yourself, but you do need to be grounded and not on your own will because it was so hard. 
and that was all because of my mistakes and my decisions. It was a really hard time to do that all by myself. I did learn so much from it. Yeah, I had to enroll myself in the school. As you know, I broke my ankle, so it was a bit hard to do things. So now I'm back home and we're trying to build on our relationship, me and my parents. And honestly, I just can't be bothered doing anything like naughty anymore. I'm just not for that. Like, I've done it and it's been done and I'm not really wanting to do any of that anymore. I just want to just be content and just settled because I was really unsettled for the past three months. It was just on my toes. Couldn't really be myself. I do regret the the mistakes that I made but it was also such a good learning curve if that makes sense. I appreciate every single person that helped me when I was going through the time when I was being a little bitch. Yeah I appreciate everybody that was there to help me. It means so much um, and I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah I just want to like more of the story if you're having just try and have a really good relationship with your parents. I'm still building up on my relationship with my parents. It's the best thing you can do. You're going to have those rebel times in your life. But just, yeah. My mum would be thinking about the consequences. If I had to give advice to myself last year, it would be think about the consequences. And it would be, do you really want to do that? You're nearly 18. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this story time. And I'm really nervous on posting this because I don't know what you guys are going to think about me. I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.